everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun, dun, dun. mukbang. Woo! Woo! I'm so excited. I haven't had creamy, delicious Italian food in so long. I've just had like rose versions of different things, like rose tteokbokki, rose pasta, like all these things. And I just want a f***ing <laughs> carbonara. This is from an Italian restaurant in Atlanta, and we've got some burgers, some cannolis, I think is what it's called, mm -hmm. some giant meatballs, some squid ink pasta, mm -hmm. mac and cheese. And with that being said, I just want to say, there are a lot of scary people out there. Would you not agree? Yes, ma'am. Okay, like so many scary people. Like imagine you're in one of those subway carts, whether you're in Korea, in New York City. Would you walk around and hand everyone your phone and say, have at it, there's no passcode. You can look through my messages, you can look through my search history. You know what, in fact, I'm actually still logged into my bank account. Do you wanna, would you do that? No way. That's absolutely gnarly. No way. You would not do that, okay? Do you even know these people? I mean, who would in their right mind do that? Well, that's happening right now. If you're not protecting yourself using ExpressVPN, okay? I use ExpressVPN even when I'm at home, on my home Wi-Fi network. I use ExpressVPN, but especially when I'm traveling or if I'm out working at a library or a cafe. Korea. Korea, when we went to Korea, I was on ExpressVPN nonstop on every single one of my devices. Everything. My phone, if I could use ExpressVPN on my toaster, I would do it. <laughs> ExpressVPN is a virtual private network that creates this secure tunnel between your device and the internet. So in other words, nobody can snoop through what you're searching for, who you're talking to. And this is super important because whenever you're connected to an unencrypted Wi-Fi network, you're at risk without a VPN. Like think about it like this. Imagine you log into your social media accounts on a public computer, your Gmail account, and then you just walk away without logging off. That's insane. So use ExpressVPN because a hacker connected to the same unencrypted Wi-Fi network can steal your personal information with only basic knowledge. They can gain access to your passwords, your financial details, even emails. So ExpressVPN, it protects you by encrypting your network data. So trust me, in the name of internet safety, peace of mind, in the name of you don't know who's out there, you gotta use a VPN, but also, in the name of K-dramas. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I just feel really like Hangulgin usually. Like recently, I feel very like Hangorin. I feel very Korean these days, okay? And I've been on my K-drama hype. And not all the K-dramas are on Netflix. Why is that? But with ExpressVPN, I just changed my location. And with the same Netflix login, I gain access to more and more shows, which is so pertinent because they keep jacking up the prices. So right now, if you guys connect to the UK, you can watch You Are Beautiful. Oh, and The Coffee Prince. Mm -hmm. Penthouse War in Life. Don't do it unless you want to be incredibly stressed out. Don't watch that one. Anyway, I connected to Germany to watch Secret Garden. Like, those are classics, okay? Do it for your K-dramas. Do it for your internet safety. And make sure to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free at expressvpn.com slash bis. That's expressvpn.com slash bis. And thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. And let's get into it. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm ready. I am so stoked. Gotta start with the meeple. Okay, okay. are you guys ready? Yes, let's Wait, the I'm gonna start with a pistachio cannoli. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just like to go against the trend, you know? Oh, it's good, it's okay. cool. All right, and then you shall Wow, this start. is huge. Mmm. All right. <gasps> <laughs> no, it just crumbled like that. Mmm. Wow. Mm. The liminess. Mmm. Mm. Try the meatball. It's mm. delicious. I'm gonna try it with some pasta. I've been really craving carbonara. Oh, honey. I'm so sorry today. It's on my face. Oh my God. I'm so Bro. sorry. Bro. You're <laughs> I feel... Violent. <laughs> Which one? This? Mm -hmm. mm. Sometimes you just need a non-sweet pasta, you know? Oh. Look at this. Oh, Ooh. hello. Oh my <laughs> God, this is wild. Everyone, we need eye protection, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's pretty good. Oh my god. This pasta with the meatball is incredible. Holy cow. How do you guys rank uh -huh. all the flavors? Mm -hmm. Like if you have to put every flavor yeah. into a list. Like salty, sweet, sour? Spicy. Mm -hmm. Sour. Yeah, sweet, salty. Okay, my top okay, one is huh. umami. Whoa. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's bougie. <laughs> I love like a mushroomy flavor. Ah. Like kind of like that umami flavor. 
Oh, anything can benefit from some umami flavor. Mm. Guys, this one looks a little... Oh, sh I, I looked it up. I was like, what are the five basic tastes? Mm -hmm. Sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. No way. Bro. Oh, bro. Mm -hmm. What the f*** is Bitter's umami? on the bottom. <laughs> Why is bitter even in there? Should we just should we replace bitter with spicy? Mm -hmm. No one's gonna pick. Okay. Bitter. Yeah. Umami, spicy, salty, sour, sweet. Sweet is last for you. Okay. If I have a chocolate cake and a giant pile of super sour candy, mm -hmm. I'm choosing sour. I love lemon zest on everything. So you're telling me, out of all the food, you will sacrifice dessert. I mean, I still got. Yeah, you still got everything, but you're gonna no more chocolate. Okay, never mind. Wait, spice is number two for you? Mm hmm What? I generally enjoy spicy food. Kimchi. Yeah. I don't like like pudak spicy. I'm not talking like nuclear rip your asshole Serious? apart spice. Mm-hmm. What about you then then? So spicy first. Mm. Oh, my boy. Sour. <laughs> oh yeah. Because I, I love lime too. Yeah. So okay, think sweet. about it this way then then. Yeah. Like whatever whatever you flavor you pick. Like if salt, <laughs> damn. Keep going, keep going. Damn. If <laughs> salty, stop. look. If salty is at the, is at the bottom, yeah. Like imagine your life without salt. Salty is kind of important, you It'll know. It'll be very bland. Yeah. Oh my god, this is so good. Alright, spicy, salty, sweet, and then everything else. Umami and yeah, yeah, yeah. bitter, whatever. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I've never had a burger that tasted so much like a cow. What? I don't know if it's the cheese they use. Or the beef patty, it's but you gotta mean, try dude. it. It tastes like it's still mooing. It's not even raw, but there, I don't know why. The oh my god, I've never had a really burger. Uh, do, you, do you taste the cow? <laughs> it tastes like a cow, doesn't it? I could use some hot sauce, but. Oh yeah, see, see? spicy. Spicy. I'm telling you, spicy. Spice for me is number one. Yeah. Crucial. But you know those people who don't enjoy spice food? Like who? they can't eat spicy food? Mm -hmm. Who? Like half the Americans? <laughs> Let's get into the confessions. Hi, this one's very short. Not a long one, but I need to get it off my chest. I feel like sometimes I'm like your priest. And I don't mean that weirdly, but like, y'all be confessing some really weird stuff here. I deposited a check twice, $500, and have yet to get caught. It's almost been five months and I'm still living on the edge that someone's gonna show up at my doorstep questioning me. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, what? Wait, so she stole a check. <laughs> no, no, she didn't steal a check. She deposited a check and it cleared twice. So she got $1,000 instead of $500. Dang. But technically that's not your fault. Yeah. Wait, no, she deposited twice. No, she deposited twice. <gasps> so she deposited twice on her phone. Oh. oh. I blame the system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if the system didn't want you to do that, why would they let you do that? Yeah, they should have flagged it. Mm-hmm. Duplicate yeah. check. Yeah, and then also like how quickly did you do it? Was it back to back or did you wait a month? Because if you wait a month, then I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Imagine she like deposited and she was like, oh, I cleared. And then the next month she's like, let me try it again. <laughs> then you have no excuse. But if you did it back to back, you got some excuses, okay? Yeah, I believe the system. Yeah. yeah. The system, it's not your fault. You did nothing wrong. Free my girl! <laughs> <laughs> okay? This, I need your help. I feel like I'm in a movie. I'm screaming, crying, throwing up on the floor. I slapped the guy in the face and I got expelled. Okay. Slapped the guy on the face and then got expelled. But I'm moving my iPad right here, okay? <laughs> it's getting good. If you love a good love triangle moment, you're gonna need to be here for this story. So let's start with someone. We're gonna call him Mr. Monopoly because he's really smart, but kind of ugly. Sorry, not sorry. Wait, is Mr. Monopoly ugly? Not that, I think he's adorable. The little mustache dude? Yeah. yeah. He looks like a sugar daddy. He's cute, yeah. M yeah. Would yeah. you marry him? Yeah, it's Monopoly, dude. <laughs> he's rich. <laughs> Yo, try this. It's so sour. Just olive? Mm. Wow. He's literally everything. I've been friends with him for over a decade now, and he's like everything you could ever want in a guy. Literally the sweetest man to ever walk the earth, and he's funny, and he's just the best friend that I could ask for, but honestly, he's not my type. Sometimes I get jealous when he goes out with other girls, but I have never done anything about it. Sometimes I think he might have a thing for me, but I never thought that he would do anything about it either, so... Anyway, yada, 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 time goes on, and I become friends with this other guy. And let me tell you, he is one fine specimen of a man, okay? I'm talking six foot tall football player who's jacked, but not so jacked that he looks like a bodybuilder. 
Not that bodybuilders are, you know, they're very hot. They're just not my type. Agreed. Okay, I think some muscles are fine, but when they start looking very turtle shelly on the back, I gotta go. He loves it. He likes <laughs> he, he's been shelly. He's been recently on um Mr. Olympia <laughs> YouTube shorts or something. Bro, I don't know. This guy looks Mr. scary Olympia. to me. Mr. Olympia? Mm. Oh, and then he went through an arm wrestling phase where all of his YouTube oh shorts... God. Okay, guys, he's not on TikTok. He's on YouTube <laughs> shorts. So, that, you know. Yeah, that'd be addicting though, shorts. Yeah, shorts. Okay, something about the YouTube bro, algorithm. I, they do be getting you. Okay. Yes. So, Mr. Olympia, bro, the guy got the most sexy mustache I've ever seen. Let me see. He the dude is so like i've never seen a mustache that fits someone so good i just call him chris bum <laughs> <laughs> look at his face holy look at his face come on man the way yeah. he smirks <laughs> honestly i think there's a big percentage he won because of that <laughs> mustache <laughs> yeah, i don't understand his obsession with mr olympia or mr olympic or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> with this let him down a youtube shorts rabbit hole into professional arm wrestling <laughs> and they're just whispering at each other let me explain okay mm. i come downstairs after waking up and i hear like really suspicious noises coming from the office like oh yeah right there oh yo oh, just hold on tight <laughs> almost there almost there and i'm like oh my god like first thing in the morning bro like jesus christ i walk in and i'm like what are you watching and he's like oh this is so good you have to come here and look at this and i'm like okay it's that kind of morning i walk over it's fucking arm wrestling and it's two jack dudes yeah. going almost there almost there i'm like what's wrong with this guy good yeah. that's it stay close to it don't be in a hurry Stand up. Uh, That's it. That's it. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're gonna start to feel something now. Are you ready? Good. I'm gonna go a little bit, okay? Alright. Right. Go a little bit. That's it. Oh, there we go. Then <laughs> then. He sent it in the family group chat. Did Are you, you watch real? it? I sent it to you too. You even reacted to it. <laughs> That's besides the point. Um. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What were we talking about? So she has Mr. Monopoly, her best friend. And she just met this other guy that's a six foot tall football player. He's jacked, but he's not Mr. Olympia jacked. Mm. That's what that's how we got here, okay? But mm. he's tan and has a fucking six pack. He's like Theo James. You know Theo James? Mm -mm. He Who's was that? recently on White Lotus season two, the douchebag husband. Oh <laughs> I get close with him very fast, and honestly, I'm so down bad. Once again, I have a feeling he might like me, but we don't do anything about it. We had this thing where he would ask me about my dream date and I would always say I wanted a guy to dress in a suit, bring me flowers, and whenever he saw someone he thought I looked good with, he would give them a business card to a flower shop without an explanation and he would laugh about it for hours. Okay, so basically her and Theo James are going around. And he's like, what's your dream date? Mm -hmm. And he, she's like, I just want a guy to pick me up in a suit and bring me flowers. So anytime they'd be walking around, he would see a guy that looks like her ideal type Mm -hmm. And he would walk up, no explanation, and hand him a flower business card to a flower shop. Meaning, like, you know, it's like an inside joke, but the guy doesn't get it. So they're giggle gaggling about it. Flash forward about a year later, he starts dating my best friend. So Yikes. don't even ask me how that happened. It wasn't a big deal because we had only ever been friends, but he basically stopped talking to me. He only called me when he wanted me to read his college applications. <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> what the f***? Okay, I know. Long story short, <laughs> he was not the one for her. Honestly, my best friend was a bitch too, but his friend started sexualizing my her and slapping her ass for fun and he did nothing about it. She was very uncomfortable and he knew that. I was beyond pissed, but I still had a fat crush on this man. Other than this one incident, he was honestly so sweet and so, 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 so hot. <laughs> anyway, one day he decided it would be funny to slap my ass personally. Wait, the hot dude is slapping yeah. her and personally, I was done with him, okay? Only using me for my brain. So I slapped him on the face hard. Oh my god. Okay, I know this next part sounds made up, Stephanie. It's gonna lead to something. But I swear to god, I was in a movie or something. The teacher saw me as I slapped him and we were both sent to the principal's office. Keep in mind, I went to a very conservative school, so any kind of violence was not permitted, and I knew I was going to get hella beat by my mom. On the way there, I kid you not, I started screaming at him, and he's screaming back, like, full-on rage, like, why the f*** would you do this? And then, in the hallway, he just kissed me. 
It was literally like that angry sexual tension you see in the movies. And we dead house made out in the middle of the hallway. And anyway, after that, I could literally feel my heart pumping. And I honestly did not care what the principal would say because I know that I had Mr. Football on my side. Or so I thought. What is that? What kind of tension was that? That was so... That was kind of hot, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like that angry tension, like, fuck you, let's make out. You never mm. had that? We can do that tonight if you want. Oh, yeah. Try I it. don't know, man. Oh, it's yeah. a little toxic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then we walk into the principal's office and he blamed it all on me. He said I slapped him for no reason what? and called me a liar for saying he slapped my ass. He has a very good reputation and he was one of the quarterbacks on the football team. So they believed him and gave me a one month suspension. It is Jeez, fair to say. That's so bro, aggressive. This is insane. Yeah. How does he make out with you like that and then turn around and do that? What a shameless piece of shit. I'm yeah. rooting for Mr. Monopoly. I stand Mr. Monopoly. Mm. Don't make me regret this, okay? <laughs> it's fair to say that I got really angry and I broke out screaming bloody murder on this guy. And I had just made out with him five fucking minutes before this. And guess what? I slapped him again. And then my fucking dean kicked me out of my school. I literally had to transfer schools because I wanted to tap some six foot ass, honestly my life but it would have been worth it to be honest like if i'm being honest with you okay whatever would she say it would have been worth it yeah to like him yeah <laughs> she said okay whatever i'm so over it now so two years later i'm in my sophomore year of college and i'm actually dating mr monopoly he told me he liked me and we've been dating for about a year now and it was easy because we were only about a 45 minute drive from each other and fucking plot twist number fucking two mr football drives four hours to my class and I kid you not brings me roses and a suit and tells me he loves me and can't stop thinking about me and gives me some beautiful long speech in the middle of my hallway so obviously I hooked up with him because I didn't know any man could have ever gotten hotter within a two-year span if I'm being honest I'm just kidding I told him to go f himself because I'm a petty ass and I blocked him on everything. I'm still dating Mr. Monopoly, and I have honestly never been happier. But I wasn't lying when I said that Mr. Football became the most fine man I think that I have ever seen in my life. Bro, is she into him or not? Like, <laughs> is she like, it's she's like ready on, to like cheat like every, any second now. She's like, yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Sometimes I still f*** him in my dreams. <laughs> Anyway, I love you, Stephanie, and I love all your videos. They make me laugh so much. I hope you don't think I'm insane. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't think you're insane. I don't think you're insane. But I do think um, we should address this. <laughs> the elephant in the room. You know what this reminds me of? I saw a TikTok the other day, and everyone in the comments was like, yes, bitch, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. And I just was like, this is weird, guys. This is not how I should be feeling about this. It's a girl being like, Give the nerdy guy a chance. Like, give the nerdy... <laughs> I forget what she wrote. She's like, give the nerdy, not so hot, like, blah, blah, blah guy a chance. Mm -hmm. And it's like videos of him doing nice things for her. And everyone in the comments is like, yes. Like, I gave my nerdy guy a chance and he treats me so well. And I'm like, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. Am I the only one that feels like I would never say that about my partner? <laughs> <laughs> it just feels so mean. It's like, a, I love you so much. And then you're just like, you're the nerdy guy. I could have chosen the hot guy, mm -hmm. but you treat me so much better. <laughs> mm. I feel a little bad too, yeah. When you see those TikToks? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little weird. You want to give the nerdy girl a chance? Is that what no, you're saying? No, you're saying it's a little like backhanded. Oh. You know, it's like, you're saying this about your She's partner. my translator. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, are you guys speaking the same language or not? But people are eating it up. And I'm sure her partner is fine with it because it got a lot of views. No, I'm, I'm not saying he's fine with it because it got a lot of views. <laughs> but I'm sure she would have taken it down if he wasn't fine with it. <laughs> my cousin vomited, pooped, and cried at the same time. Huh? <laughs> my cousin vomited, pooped, and cried at the same time on her first date with the hot customer in the restaurant. Okay, I can't understand you. 
My cousin vomited, pooped, and cried at the same time on her first date with the hot customer in their restaurant. Hi, it was a story I heard from a friend, so I'm going to tell the story the exact same way she told it to me, LMFAO. Yana, my cousin, was a waitress in a local restaurant. To describe her physique, she is very pretty and very innocent looking. Basically, she's the type of girl that guys would usually and instantly blush when they get to talk to her. Like, I'm, I'm picturing girl next door. Well, at least... I know that's true, as I've witnessed a lot of these scenarios of guys tripping over to talk to this girl. But this, this is my favorite. Yana has had suitors, but none of them were really that consistent. This handsome customer suddenly catches her attention, okay? Wait, so she works at a restaurant? Yeah, uh -huh. and this handsome customer walks in. He was sent randomly by the heavens. That's what her eyes said. Okay, that's how she's describing it. It's like heaven sent him down into this mm -hmm. restaurant, and here he is, just a body made by Jesus himself, okay? <laughs> Like literally, he was there every week and sometimes asked the staff if it was okay for Yana to serve his meal if she wasn't that busy, basically asking for Yana to serve him. Their sweet and cute interactions in that restaurant lasted for two months before he actually got the chance to ask Yana if she would go on a date with him. Mm -hmm. If someone else told me the story, I would instantly assume that their connection would be smooth as a baby's butt, right? Because they're both hot. Imagine going out with a handsome man who always visits and makes sure that he's there before your shift ends, right? Like obviously this guy is a green flag, as others might say. And I would agree, because I assure you, he is. Yana is a lucky ass, okay? So fast forward, Yana tells me about the date and I was really happy for her. However, I was worried about her going out with a complete stranger. She's younger than me, so I was really concerned about letting my little Yana, my little cousin, date a hot stranger guy. I saw his pic, by the way. I'm like, holy shit, hot. <laughs> I didn't care that they had been meeting with each other in the restaurant or the fact that everyone in the restaurant that she was working with knew him already because he was a loyal customer the second that he laid eyes on Yana. Like literally the minute that he saw her, he kept coming to this restaurant every single week. Everyone in the restaurant knew this guy. But she assured me, and I saw how much she liked him. I mean, who wouldn't? She describes him as being respectful, cute, just perfect. So then she gave me his number and I called him. I'm like a little supervisor, okay? I asked him a few questions, deciding whether I want whether I want to cover up Yana's absence from our house. So the cousins live together, and I think the parents would be upset if she had gone on a date. Mm, so okay. she's like making sure that this guy is good before she lies for Yana, you know what I mean? Mm. And I admit it, he's so nice. He's assuring, reassuring, and you know, it's just all that anxiety inside of me about this date, it came loose. Since I got hyped up, Yana and I are getting excited and she's trying on clothes that she's wearing for the date. And then finally the day comes and I'm looking at Yana who's so beautifully pretty. She wore this cute red cocktail dress and a pair of doll shoes. Her hair was all tied up in a bun and she was stunning, I tell you. But still, I went on and I warned her about what she should do if ever the Johnny guy had bad intentions and all of that jazz. I'm like, okay, this is what you do. Step one, step two, step three. I told her to call me anytime she was in trouble and I wanted this date to be a success. Yana deserves it, okay? Yana went on her merry way and I did as well. So Yana goes on her date. And I'm pretty busy with work and I forgot about the date for a while. Afternoon comes around and I was on my way to my boyfriend's car when Johnny was calling me. Yana's date is calling me. The hot guy from the restaurant is calling me. Okay. And I told you, my hand was sweating for like a millisecond. It did. I was so nervous. I took the call as quick as I could. And I imagined a million different scenarios of something that could have happened to Yana. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, did something happen? And he's like, it's me. Yana, I'm at the hospital. Come here, please. ASAP. I almost strangled my boyfriend to force him to drive as fast as he could to the hospital. I did not waste time. I immediately hopped outside the car and ran toward the emergency room. And there I saw Johnny, the hot guy from the restaurant with blood on his hands. Blood. I was pissed. I was mad, mad. I went near Johnny and I got up in his face. And at this time, my slow ass boyfriend was finally behind me. <laughs> and he's like, calm down, calm down. Try to calm me down, okay? And he's like, and I'm like, where's Yana? What did you do? <laughs> My voice is echoing in the emergency room. And I really didn't care if a lot of people were looking in our direction. Of course, I'm nervous and I'm panicking. And I was the one who agreed to let Yana go out with this guy. It was my responsibility to take care of her. Johnny didn't even get the chance to speak before Yana, with a bandage around her head, wearing an oversized shirt, hair slightly damp, wearing an unfamiliar pair of slippers, walks up and pulls me away as fast as she can to my boyfriend's car.
So she's been discharged from the hospital. My boyfriend, still confused, okay, following behind us. <laughs> As we went into his car, she screamed at us, asking us to go home. She basically was begging my boyfriend to drive. I'm getting mad. I'm getting frustrated. Me and my boyfriend are constantly asking her questions, but she's just crying her eyes out. We even assured her that we could just go back, talk to Johnny, and not worry as my boyfriend was with us. He could even bring the police. But she kept shaking her head. She said, no, 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 no. She's screaming, crying. It's my fault. It's my fault. When we arrived home, I noticed how she was utterly blanked out as so I followed her to a room and I sat silently beside her. At the time, I was confident that Johnny had done something horrible to her. But hey, didn't I tell you he's a green flag? Just mm. wait. For the nth time, I asked Yana, who's now calmed down. We gave her Chicken Joy from Jollibee as her favorite, okay? <sighs> At this point, my boyfriend and I were already planning to call the police, but the moment our eyes met, I knew something had happened. Not in the way that one would assume if you saw Yana state at the time, but something happened. And she says, promise me if I tell you, you won't. You won't judge me. You won't laugh. I promised. How I wish I never made that promise. Basically, what happened was, they decided to watch a movie at Johnny's apartment. Yana suggested going to the grocery store and buying some ingredients so that they could cook lunch and dinner at Johnny's. So that's what they did. They had a great time choosing ingredients and paying at the counter together. They arrived at Johnny's place and they were about to have their first cutesy little date. What could possibly go wrong? Well, something did, because Yana slipped. When Yana slipped, Johnny panicked because she was unconscious for a good five minutes, but she resuscitated back to the realm of embarrassment. He panicked and her head was literally bleeding. When she woke up, she felt dizzy and asked Johnny if she could use the restroom. Johnny asked her countless times if she was okay, but she immediately ran to the toilet and started throwing up. Johnny then followed her to the bathroom, gathered up all her hair behind her head so she wouldn't have a hard time puking her guts out. Yana thought it was the end of her embarrassment, but then she felt liquid gushing out of her butthole. Wait, what happened? What is going on? Out of frustration, she starts removing her shorts and undies and sat on the toilet while Johnny helped her. She also ended up puking at the same time on the bathroom floor as she flushed liquid out of her butt, heart emoji. At this moment, she's already crying. The fact that this handsome guy has witnessed the most disgusting thing that has ever happened in her entire life, I mean, she would expect him to be turned off. And so she cried as she watched Johnny cleaning the remnants of her puke and poop. Off the bathroom oh wall. Gosh. Johnny then went out of the restroom when he felt that Yana, you know, knew what she was doing and that she could do the dirty deeds by herself. And as he closed the door, he told Yana that she could shower and he reassured her that he'd give her his sister's unused undies that were stocked in his apartment and a pair of shorts and a shirt. Yana couldn't do anything. So she did what Johnny instructed her. I laughed. I laughed until I cried. And then I laughed some more. After Yana told me what happened, she starts crying. All this time, I was mad at Johnny, but in fact, I should have pitied him. Having to bring a girl home, watch her puke, poop, cry in your bathroom, I wondered what kind of thoughts would wander around in this man's head as he cleaned his restroom. Johnny, on the other hand, was still constantly calling and texting Yana, but she never responded. Johnny even reached out to me, so I told him that it's better if you give Yana space, and if he's still worried, he should come and visit us instead. And he did. He brought with him Yana's undies, dress, and doll shoes that he had, she had left, and they were all cleaned. He had washed them. I'm telling you, she's one lucky bitch. If y'all are wondering how they're doing, we'll take a guess. Okay, take a guess. How do you think Yana and Johnny are doing? They broke up. <clears throat> they're never together. Well, a few years passed after that wonderful incident and I just got invited by my friend, Yana's cousin, the voice of this story, and she asked me if I was able to join their wedding celebration. <gasps> what? So yeah, the invitation just reminded me of this story. That's why I'm telling it to you guys. P.S. We both swore to the grave that that red dress we were gonna bury it and that she would never tell anyone about this, but I guess I love you guys so much that I had to disrespect the red dress. Mm. Wait, but oh I'm God. so confused. What? Yeah. How did that happen? A little suspicious to me. <laughs> but Brett, this is not a true crime video, okay? I'm thinking, what if she had been feeling sick and that's why she slipped? What if she was drugged? <laughs> Bruh, of course this possibly, guy. Possibly. I think she was sick already. Mm. Probably some sort of like issue that she yeah. probably already needed to diarrhea and throw up mm -hmm. and then in you know like when you're so sick yeah, you start yeah. feeling like the room is moving yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. sure <laughs> and then you slip yes and then you wake up and yeah. both ends are like i gotta go okay
Precisely. Yep, yep. I'm just saying, if this happened on the first date, would you still date the girl? Have you ever cleaned up someone's vomit before? Uh, I have. Uh, this was like four years ago. How, how was the experience? It was at w Waffle House. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, so basically, yeah. the camera got cut off. So then it's retelling his waffle story. <laughs> and we're story. acting like this is our first time hearing it. So let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. <laughs> Tell us what happened at waffle. House. A little hard. Okay. Okay. So I had a friend. <gasps> I know, and then he was like a little tipsy, and so he threw up, and it was like a bunch of hash browns. And like, <laughs> okay, this is new detail. <laughs> this is new, <laughs> new detail. New <laughs> detail. I'm trying to do it a little better. Yeah, this yeah, time, yeah. But okay. Yeah, the puke was like whitish. <laughs> Like beige, beige color, beige color. Okay, completely. This new is detail, new anyway, story. Yeah, it was so smelly. It was, it was, it looked like a puddle of like pond or something. It looks but, like this, guys. Yes. The employees had to come help. Some of our other friends, we uh, all cleaned up together. Oh my god. While the guy that threw up, he uh, passed out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Not a fun experience. So good. Oh, do you want to ask? question you've never asked us before yeah. like ever Wait, i just thought of a story what? so a man yeah a man went to <laughs> Don't let me like so that. a man went, was hungry okay. he went to this famous ramen shop right mm -hmm. he sits down he ready to order food and then he looked over next to the table there's a bowl of ramen that's like full like completely full oh, no. looks okay. like brand new uh -huh. and he was like huh why did the person whoever ordered it didn't eat it and yeah, left yeah, yeah. so he's like oh man okay he took it over oh, no 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 <laughs> what i think i know where this is going so he started eating it right okay. he's eating he's slurping eating oh delicious all the way to the end okay and he looked down there's a dead cockroach Ew. Oh my God. at the bottom of the plate so he's like oh my god he gagged and he threw up <laughs> right into the bowl. Ew. <laughs> Ew, so someone <laughs> and, then, and, then, it. and then another guy walks by. He's like, hey, you saw the cockroach, huh? That was me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bro, you're so funny. <laughs> you think so? I, when he acts like this, yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for the next confession? Yeah, yes. <laughs> so I've seen you talk about eczema previously with another confession and your sister's experience with it and Sophie's experience and potentially Mia, okay? it's just, We got a whole eczema family, okay? When I was little, like a little baby to like seven or eight years old, I had pretty severe eczema. It was on my arms, my behind my knees, and my it made just mobility really hard for me. I, I developed sensitivities to basically everything like milk, scents, soaps, fabrics, feathers. It made my life really difficult since all I wanted to do was be a normal kid. To top it off, my older brother of three years has autism and Often, he got more attention than I ever did as a kid, which I totally understand, but I always just felt this burden to my parents since I really didn't have like, um, since I've had a really bad underlying health issue my whole life, I've always been clumsy and I just had terrible luck with my health, like my kidneys issues growing up, random trips to the ER, being stung by a stingray, like all these stories Jeez. for another day, okay? After I was like eight or nine, my skin starts to clear up, just probably due to my age since eczema seems to come and go for many. Around this time, my parents divorced and I started to move around my state a lot. Randomly though, one day, years later, when I was in fifth or sixth grade while on a trip to Myrtle Beach, my face just began to swell up. It was the second day of the trip and I'm from Massachusetts, so we were far from home and my dermatologist to get any help. From there, it turned into this massive eczema flare up on my face. And after this time, literally anything would trigger these flare-ups. Every time, they would just get worse. My eyes would be swollen shut for days. I would have to slather my body in lotion and ointments and take steroid medications to help my skin, which eventually they would up the dosage, which would cause re residual swelling from the steroids. This was on and off and on and off for years. My quality of life was dwindling, and so whatever self-esteem I had is just gone. I've always been shy, I've had bad, bad anxiety, so this just blew my world up. I begged my mom to let me stay home from school my, when my skin was like this. I remember on days, it would just peel. You know, my skin would just peel, and kids would say that I looked like I had a beard or sand on my face. Teachers would stare at my red inflamed skin and ask if there was something going on with me after reading the emails my mom sent to them about my situation. I told the principal and she did nothing. The bullying was nonstop. The only thing that faculty and staff did for me was tell me to stand up for myself. 
Okay, I, I always say this, but I feel like eczema is so under talked about. Like nobody thinks it's, everyone thinks eczema is like a, oh, just stop itching, or they think it's like a vanity issue. It affects so many people and it's literally debilitating. I moved from that school to another one in eighth grade. I had another fresh start and then when my flare up would start at the school, I was so terrified to go to school. I begged my mom to let me stay home. I was out for a month at that time and I was sick. I had like a weak immune system. I went into school finally and I tried really hard to hide my face. Like I'd hide it in my sweatshirt behind my sleeves, literally anything. But when someone finally saw my face at this new school, they were surprised that I was back and they were worried about me. I was so confused. I didn't realize kids could be nice and not judgmental. I cried when I got home from school and I was so happy that they weren't mean to me. No one made any comments. They were all just happy I was back. The story kind of takes a turn for the worst here though. The summer before I started high school, I had the worst flare up of my life. 80% of my body was covered in eczema. I was trying homeopathic remedies, ointments, balms, salves, lotions, honey, tea, herbs, water treatments, oatmeal baths. Everything dried my skin more and more to the point where not just like walking hurt, but even eating was difficult. The skin around my mouth was so chapped, I couldn't even open it without re-splitting the scabs and cuts on my lips. Oof. I was miserable. In this moment of my life, I wanted nothing more than to die. I didn't see a point in living a life that I couldn't even enjoy. I couldn't travel or walk or eat or be happy without the constant itch and pain, the looks and the judgment. I just couldn't take it anymore. Like whatever confidence I had, which was already in the negatives, it was gone. I hated myself so much. I truly wished I could have been born anyone else. I ended up getting bumped on a wait list for a very, very famous derm in the area. He saw my skin and immediately knew how to help me. Rather than making me try more medicines and creams, he just went straight to the shots. Oh! The shots your sister yeah, took. Yeah, that many people use to treat their eczema. Cleared up almost completely. I wow. still get small patches, but nothing to be upset about. My life has gotten so much better. Mm. I am able to exercise, eat, and sleep without pain. I can't necessarily say I'm happy since everyone has their other problems, but I can finally say that I want to continue to live this life. I look forward to living life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering where you come in, during one of my baddest flare-ups in 2019, I was bedridden and I stumbled upon your channel. I've been watching your videos ever since, whether I'm eating or drawing or just doing homework. When I couldn't enjoy my life, I felt like watching you could help me look forward to the life I could live when I was better and the food I could eat when I was better. I'm super interested in Korean culture now as well and I really want to study in Asia when I go to college. The food there? <laughs> oh my god, okay, thank you Stephanie, Stephanie, and Dan Dan for filling my lowest moments with laughter and company. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but seriously, I can't say that I relate to you, but I have seen literally firsthand like just how hard it is to have eczema even now like my sister's gotten a lot better with the shots but sophie was just over and her ear is like cut up basically because it's so dry and you know they put all the ointments on it they take her to the doctors but when she's sleeping she she gets itchy and she pulls at it like it's just so unfortunate you know yeah you know like that's her whole life sophie's gonna be dealing with this i yeah. know but like sometimes doesn't it go away from a baby um Sometimes, like so, <clears throat> they do say a lot of baby babies' eczemas go away, but I don't think Sophie's gonna go away. Mm -hmm. That's like what my sister thinks because it's like in the family and stuff. Another thing is like some people's eczema kind of ebbs and flows, mm -hmm. but it's just kind of always there. Yeah, it's so stressful. Hopefully like Mia doesn't. I don't think Mia has eczema as of right now. But it's crazy, like even Sophie, sometimes she'll have to take days off of daycare because she just has flares up. Yeah. Like out of It's nowhere. crazy, sometimes like midday, like when yes! Sophie this comes happens. over, like it, you just see patches on her face. Just so red and yeah. inflamed. So, yeah. And then she starts, she starts to cry. Oh, and yeah. Like, Cause you rough. know, like you know, when you're a kid, imagine just how uncomfortable and you can't even yeah. say anything. Mm -hmm. Like you don't even know why it's So you just cry or. Yeah. Know. Stephanie, I'm probably one of your few male viewers. Thank you oh, so hey, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be. Okay, sometimes I look at my demo and I'm like, guys. Well, there are no guys, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think your content is lit. Keep doing what you do, oh. Stephanie. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. You think your content is lit? Yes. Hell yeah. Stop it. So fire. So He's mama. like, no, literally. It's a dumpster fire, okay? <laughs> So this story contains mature elements, drugs to be exact, mm. as a brief disclaimer. Back in March, the craziest thing happened at my school and I got to witness it firsthand. By the way, I'm a student at a highly prestigious male-only Australian high school. 
Oh, that's kind of cool. So obviously cases, situations involving violence and illegal substances, super rare at this school. School finishes at 3.15 p.m., but I had an after-school commitment, so I finished later, so like around 4.30 p.m. As I'm coming out of school, I see two students from my year level through the window of the second floor walking on the school oval towards, bro, these terms are too fancy for me. I don't know what the school oval is, okay? Maybe like a courtyard? Towards another younger girl from our sister school. Okay, so the... The girls have a private school, the boys have a separate private school, but they often collaborate in events, you know, like sister schools. I didn't think much of it, and I started heading down the stairs and out of the building because a lot of students from our school will hang out with the girls from the sister school, but as I'm leaving, I hear screaming. I looked over, and I saw that the two guys had pulled out a machete and were threatening her. I obviously couldn't have fought against a machete and two of the biggest gym bros at my school, so I ran to get the teacher and hoped that she would be fine until then. The teacher came out and started screaming and the boys had no choice but to drop their weapons knowing that they had been caught. Well anyways, I just left the situation to the teacher to deal with because my parents kept spam calling me. Next day, two students are pulled out of the class and everyone had heard about what had happened to the girl. Turns out it was a drug deal gone wrong. The girl, who was in year 10, a sophomore, was the one dealing drugs drugs like it was a big order and the two guys that were the ones wanting to buy from her well they didn't want to pay so that they thought it was a good idea to scare her by pulling out the machete and just stealing the drugs from her so they got arrested for attempted assault and possession they didn't have to face the harshest consequences because they were so young and rich they all just got community service including the girl at the next assembly we had, they were giving out awards to the students for their condemnable qualities, and I received a bravery award hey. for responding to the situation well. So because of this, I got a DM. Not me being like, did I DM someone? That's direct message. <laughs> From guess who? From the bullies. From her. So we talked for a few weeks, and suddenly, we're in a relationship. Wait, what? Wait, wait, <laughs> wait huh? what? Like, you're just suddenly in a relationship with, like, Queen Narcos? Like, what just happened? <laughs> like, you saved someone, got a bravery award, and now, now you're running some sh Like, she would spoil me with gifts because she was so rich, and with all that money from her drug deals, she's set for life, basically. Oh, I bet, because these private school kids... Really she's rich. set for life. How much is she dealing? I mean, oh, think about these private school like, kids. Oh, my God. She's dealing millions? Oh, but well, private school kids. She continues rich. to do these drug deals. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, with more caution after getting caught. A bonus of our relationship is that I get free drugs. So, <laughs> 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 so okay. after a month of dating, I think she's starting to know that I'm only in it for the money. Mm. Yeah, so I saw her hitting up another guy on her phone. But the crazy thing is, is that that guy is the friend of the attacker. Like, the one that who pulled the machete on her. I don't know if I should tell her that because I don't think she knows. Maybe I should. Anyway, the longer we stay in this relationship, the longer I'll have free supply of drugs. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think I should do? Oh, uh, send it over here. <laughs> send some over here. I'm kidding. Um, you know, I say, I say, don't bite the hand that feeds you. You know what I mean? Oh. I say, do what you gotta do. I'm just kidding. I don't say that. I'm a family-friendly channel. I say, don't do drugs. I say, say no to peer pressure <laughs> yeah. and drugs. Uh-huh, yes. All drugs are bad. <clears throat> Anyways, <clears throat> don't do drugs. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> this is the story of how I found out my whole life is a lie. Okay, growing up, I had always been confused with my identity. You know, my mom is Thai and my dad is American, despite living in the land of the free. I've always been brought up with Thai food, Buddhism, and Thai customs, like putting my palms together and bowing when greeting a Thai elder, or taking off my shoes before entering the house. This was much to my father's disappointment, wait what? As he would always remind me that I'm an American. Whenever, wait, you can be Thai American, sir. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> Whenever I speak Thai to my mother or call my mom's food smelly, before offering to order some variation of fast food. Wait, he calls your mom's food smelly? So yes, very confusing and way too much for my little brain to handle. I also have another part what? of my family. I have an aunt who's my mom's sister and a cousin who's half Thai and Japanese. For some reason, her and I were like twins. Like we looked the same, spoke with the same voice and pitch, like the same things, etc. We were like sisters. But anyways, my friend and I saw this trend where people would send their DNA to a company who tells you your heritage. So we used some of our pocket money to buy a kit. In no time, the results arrived. We both pressed on the app, the bright screen gleam gleaming at us. But when I saw my results, I was shocked. 
I wasn't American. Like, I didn't even have a drop of European in me. I was Thai, though, thank God. But what was the other half, the other 50%? I scrolled down with anticipation. I was 46% Japanese slash East Asian. I gasped. I showed my friend my results. As soon as we got home, I asked my mother, and she explained to me, like, yeah, it was true. She had gotten with my uncle... Who's Japanese? In Japan, after my aunt and him divorced, I asked her whether dad knew or not, and my unhinged mother said exactly this. Nope, just me and you know now. Wait, 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 wait. So she's half Thai and half Japanese? Yeah. Like 0% white. And the dad was like, that's my child. Wait, the weird part is the uncle. So the mom... Like, no, but I think that the aunt is her sister. So like her sister's Yeah, the like sister's that. husband is Jeff. Yeah, wow. that kind of, you know, told me to keep it a secret and never tell a soul. So I haven't until now. <laughs> also, I love your videos. I have always been into true crime and you make it so much more entertaining and not as gloomy. I also love to kick and eat while I listen to your mukbangs. Keep it up. Wait, I'm having an identity crisis right now. <laughs> That's it? You're just gonna leave me there? You're just gonna leave me there after finding out that your mom had an affair and then you're like half Japanese and then you're gonna be like, anyway, I love your videos because like, <laughs> I don't know, I cook and eat and watch it. That's it? What? Yeah, like so she's she and her cousin are basically oh. step stepsisters. And they're like twins, she was saying. They look the same, yes. they talk the same. Maybe they are <gasps> twins. Yes, because ah. they have they share the same dad. Oh. Just diff and the mother oh is are, the mothers are sisters. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, Wait. oh my god. Oh my so god. the same father and the mothers are sisters. Oh That's he's weird. doing some nasty oh. shit. That's, That's what he's doing. Oh. So how are the kids related then? They're cousins and half Sisters. They're cousins and half sister. That's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool, you said. Yeah. <laughs> and then you gotta hide it from your dad. So, like, how do you suddenly, like, oh, I, I don't know, I just randomly want to learn Japanese. I <laughs> 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 just feel like Tokyo might be a great place for me to move to. You can say, like, I wanted to watch anime without subtitles. Oh, yeah, because my dad would <laughs> believe that. My dad would be like, oh, my stupid kid is learning a whole ass language so she could watch anime without bro sometimes i be fucking dubbing k dramas when i get lazy i'm like just dub it just bro. dub it okay i'm busy i mean maybe for her it might work not for me my dad would be like what <laughs> something's weird something's weird hello stephanie i started that's very formal i started watching your videos during the pandemic and now i've gotten to the point that i watch your videos while doing my homework washing the dishes before i sleep etc your videos are just so entertaining and wholesome thank you for sharing your joy wow it's very like grammatically correct i feel my confession <laughs> it's like very grammatically correct i'm taking nursing i don't like it i mean i don't like biology anatomy and physiology and patho pathophysiology. I hate it. I do like helping people, just not through nursing. However, I come from a Filipino household, and if you don't have any Filipino friends or have seen Joy Koi, Joe Koi on Netflix, you probably, bro, <laughs> let me tell you why I watch Joy Koi, Joe Koi. Because Andropa won't shut up about Joe Koi. That's all he talks about. Anytime we the talk comedian. about... Like, we could literally crack the smallest joke, okay? And we'll all be like, ha, ha, ha. And then he goes, speaking of funny, have you guys seen Joe Koi's latest Netflix switch? I'm like, do you work for him? Do you work for him? You probably might not know that Filipino households, especially Filipino moms, push their children to do nursing. I would like to clarify that I'm trying my best, even though nursing is like the death of me. Hospitals are in need of nurses, and there are people suffering that need help. I don't want to let my future patients down. But just to give you a little bit of background on myself, I'd like to say that I'm an artsy person. I love to sing, sew, crochet, embroider, paper crafting, etc. I have even have a book that I've been planning to write since 8th grade. I'm 21 now, by the way. I also used to play the violin until I quit in senior year. None. None of my hobbies scream, nursing. It's not like I want to go professional with any of my hobbies. That's just going to suck the fun out of them. I don't even know what I want to do. My mom still wants me to be a nurse, and that's that. I retaliated once and she explained to me if that she hadn't been a nurse, both her and my dad wouldn't have had a job during the pandemic. She said the hospitals will always be the last ones to go down. This is the sad part, but I feel like a fraud. 
I've never held a job, let alone am very comfortable around people. As I progress forward in my nursing career, there's this like crushing pain that I feel like I don't belong. My friend's mom has also made comments saying that I probably won't make it. Damn. And my mom sees that as an opportunity for me to prove her wrong. I'm not exactly a social person and I'm wary to talk to anyone ha about how I feel. It hurts to know that I can only keep these feelings for myself. I really want to try my hardest, but it's getting harder to when I don't have the motivation to try. I have to keep silent about exams because my parents will pester me about my grades too. Not to mention, my mom is a nurse with a lot of experience. She's well known in her department and she's knowledgeable and I'm scared going forward because my classes are getting harder and I'm afraid that I'm going to fail my NCLEX, the ultimate final nursing exam, and everyone's gonna be disappointed. I try to stay positive about the freedom that I'll have to do whatever I want when I become a nurse, but there's always a sense of guilt and fear looming over me every day. Anyways, I'm sorry that this is very long. I didn't expect it to get this long. Thank you if you're reading this. Your videos bring a lot of joy and happiness whenever I'm upset. That's relatable though. That is mm -hmm. so relatable. And I, I don't even know what to say yes because you know it's so much easy to give advice yeah. in this situation to be like you should follow your dreams but then like who pays rent who yeah. pays bills who's gonna tell your mom that who's gonna tell your parents that like who's gonna do the hard parts of following your dreams especially because you, you know you might not even know what your dreams are you know what i would say keep doing what you're doing but a uh, sunken ship fallacy Hey, you Second ship that. fallacy, okay? Because one thing I notice, like even with my sister, I'm always like, oh my god, you should try all these different things, you know? But she's like dead set in her pharmacist ways because, you know, she went to pharmacy school and did all of this and she literally works so hard. I'm just like, just the same as you, you know? But then like, if you become a nurse and you've been through all that pain, but an opportunity strikes or you have this feeling like you need to try something. Yeah, so the sunken ship theory is that the ship is already sunk. Like just make decision from this point on. Yeah. Instead of looking back and saying, oh, I spent 10 years or I spent all this money studying to be a nurse or I, I, I already spent all these ex resources. But instead just think, what's the best decision I can make right now moving forward? It's like, think of it, the movie, right? You go to a movie, you walk, sit there for an hour, the movie sucks ass. Do you continue? For another hour or do you just leave now i know the right answer you no just... there's no right answer it's just like most people will probably sit through right. it because they already spend the money and the mm -hmm. time might as well but the sunken ships theory is the best decision now is just let's not waste more time let's just do something i want to do so like if it were me in that position you didn't even ask for advice but i'm giving unsolicited advice thank you sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay i would continue with nursing just because, you know, life is not perfect where you can be like, I'm going to take a year off to like explore my dreams. You know, that's not how it works. <laughs> I would continue with nursing, but I would have this mindset of like, maybe nurse, because you don't know what you want to do right now. So even if you quit nursing, then what, right? I would just continue with nursing, maybe even become a nurse. And who knows, maybe your artsiness, your creativity, and then mix with your nursing knowledge, you have this amazing idea or this amazing opportunity presents itself. That's the moment where you need to be like, I gotta take a risk, I gotta take a chance. But I, I know a lot of people that are like, no, I can't, like I need this stability now. Mm -hmm. Like I already went through nursing school, so I'm not gonna give it up for this. That's when I would, you know, do something. But, oh my God, I was lost for so long. I was working so many random jobs, so I totally feel you. And you just feel like everybody knows what they're doing, and you're the only one that doesn't know what you're doing. But it's a lie. Literally nobody yes. knows what they're doing. Like, that's what you think. I don't know what I'm doing. My sister doesn't yes. know what she's doing. Like, nobody knows what anybody's doing. Yeah. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Thank you for confiding in us, but... <clears throat> That's it for today's juicy confessions, guys. What are your thoughts? Do we all need therapy? Do we all need Jesus? Leave it in the comments. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to check out ExpressVPN. Linked in the description. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.